Hi everyone, welcome back to Winging It. My name's Rebecca. If you're new here, you're really welcome. And if you're a regular, then welcome back. We're in week 47 and it's the third week in November and that means that this week is a nature-based prompt. If you've been watching over on Instagram, you'll know that this week we're making our autumn tree. Now we've made three other trees as we've gone through Winging It following the seasons of the year and this is the last one in that series so don't worry if you haven't seen the earlier videos I will link them along the way so you'll be able to watch those if you need a refresher on the methods that we're using. We're not going to use any of the fill stitches for this month but we are going to use some fill techniques as we make the trunk and I will explain that process as we go through. So we're going to take a little bit of a pause just to complete our little seasonal tree series that we've been working on all through the year. I've put a list of everything you're going to need in the description below so do check that out, gather all your bits and pieces and let's get stitching. Through our Winging It series we've been creating these seasonal trees at different points in the year and back in January in week three we made our first one, we created a winter tree and we created a sort of circular tree using the negative space around it to define the circle. So we didn't stitch an outline to our circle, we filled the space with branches and the circular shape appeared gradually. We also learnt stem stitch and learnt how to create shading using different tones of thread and that made some of the branches come forward and some of them recede into the background to give our tree depth and dimension. In March we created a spring tree and we focused on laburnum and we created these strings of blossoms that you see on laburnum trees using some textured threads and our chain stitches that we were using at the time and we were focusing on yellow during March and used some yellowy brown shades to create our trunk and branches and added some bugle beads for a bit of sparkle. Then in June we created our leafy tree, our summer tree and this month we used thread blending. We threaded multiple shades into our needle as we were stitching the leaves and that created this really full and verdant sort of appearance with loads of different shades of green. We used our greenish browns for the trunk and so we are now ready to make our autumn tree. I'm going to be using this nice brown felt and I've got some shades of brown, nice earthy browns, almost mushroomy colours. I've got a mid-tone, a dark and a light and I've also got some shades of gold and copper because I want to base this on a sycamore tree which is one of my favourite trees in autumn. I've also got some beads in a sort of brighter gold and a more antique gold so that we can make our tree consistent with all the others. We've used beads in all the other trees and I wanted to do the same here. So I've sketched out the tree on my panel, I've marked in my border, I've put in the circle and I've made my trunk struggled a little bit to place it there so it looks a bit chaotic at the bottom but it doesn't matter too much and I thought we could start with the branches and then add some leaves in autumnal tones in these nice earthy colours. I'm going to start with my mid-tone brown I've got two strands here of embroidery thread and I'm going to use stem stitch just like I have done in the past so I've got my mid-tone here to start a stem stitch you come up at the very end of your line where you want your stitch to begin and I'm going to take my needle down one stitch length forward from where my thread comes up and rather than pulling the thread all the way through to the back I'm going to rock my needle back out of the felt half a stitch length back so that it comes up halfway along the stitch that I'm going to make. And when I pull it through, my thread should form a T-shape. I hope you can see it there. So I've got my stitch length going along the, the trunk and my working thread coming down. 
I'm going to lift my working thread back up to the top and I'm going to take my needle one stitch length forward from where the thread comes out. So it's half a stitch length on from the end of the previous stitch. And I'm going to do the same again. So I'm going to rock my needle back to the end of the previous stitch so that it comes up halfway along the stitch I'm currently making and pull through. And I've got these interlocking stitches that sit next to each other. And I just carry on like that all the way up the trunk and through to the end of the branches. Just working one stitch length forward and then coming up half a stitch length back so that my stitches sit next to each other. And I really love this as a fill stitch. That's how we've used it so far. You can use it to outline, but when you stitch the lines of stem stitch right next to each other it creates a lovely woody barky texture i've reached the outside edge of my tree and so now i'm going to work back down trying to keep my next line of stitches as close to that first one as possible sit it right in and i'm just coming down a little way down the branch before i start because i want my branches to taper as they reach the edges of the tree and i'm just going to work my stem stitch backwards back down to the base of the trunk and because we're working our stitches in different directions it's going to create this lovely gnarly textured bark sort of surface on the trunk when i get down to the bottom i'm going to turn my panel around again and work another line back up and this is how I'm going to fill my trunk. So every now and again, I'm going to keep my stitches going out into a branch that's going to reach the edge of the circular shape of the canopy of the tree. And all the time I'm trying to sit my stitches as close in to the previous line as I possibly can. So if I bring it up close, you can see that sort of knobbly gnarly texture there that is just perfect for bark i love using this stitch for stitching tree trunks and i'm just going to fill in my tree just shy of the outside edge on the right and the left there and i want to leave some space for some shading so there's my mid tones in i've got my darker shade now and i have got some spaces i haven't been too enthusiastic with my mid-tone branches because I want to add in some shading and put some darker branches into some of those gaps so that they seem to come forward and give our tree some depth. So I'm going to make a branch low down on the left hand side of the trunk here. I'm going to start off by adding a line of dark stem stitch on the left hand side of the mid-tone lines that I've already stitched. So I'm just doing exactly the same, working my stem stitch in exactly the same way and taking it out to form that branch. And then I'm going to come back down to thicken up that branch a little bit more. Now I don't want a stripy tree, I want to make it look blended. So what I'm going to do now is just add some straight stitches here and there just on that left hand side of the tree in amongst the mid-tone stitching that I've done. So I'm just sort of breaking up that hard line and adding a little bit of uh, shading really, blending the colours a little bit so that my tree looks rounded rather than stripy. So I hope you can see there that's a bit of shading there. Now I want to add in some other branches in the spaces and what I want to do is make some of these overlap the branches that I've already stitched because we want these branches to seem that they are forward of the mid-tone ones and so I'm just going to stitch them in in a way that overlaps the previous branches. So I'm just going to take my lines over the top. So there's my first overlapping branch. I'm going to work on the right hand side of the tree now 
and add in a couple more foreground branches. So now I've got my lightest shade of brown and I want to add some highlights on the right hand side of the tree trunk. So I'm going to do exactly the same again, adding lines of stem stitch on the right hand side in the lighter shade. But I also want to put in some background branches and they are going to fill some of the gaps that I've left with the other colours. So here I'm adding in some stem stitch and then I'm going to add in some of those little sketchy straight stitches in amongst the mid-tone part of the stem just to blend in that colour a little bit. And now I'm going to add in some branches that I want to form the background branches of the tree. And that does mean that, again, they're going to overlap, but I want to stitch them underneath the branches that are already there because these are going to be in the background. So I'll just stitch up to the branches that are already there and then take my needle down to the back of the felt and then come up the other side of the branch. You could also do it by sliding your needle under the stitches of the branches in the mid-tones and darker shades. Either way works fine. That's all my lighter shaded branches in and now I want to add in the small twiggy branches that are at the ends and I've just got a single strand of thread here and I'm just putting in some quite angular straight stitches. If you look at a tree, the branches don't tend to be curved. That's That seems like the intuitive way to do it, but they are actually quite angular. And so I'm just doing straight stitches that go off in slightly different angles to create those thinner branches. And I want a combination of lighter branches and mid-tone branches and darker ones because, again, I want them to appear that they're at different distances away. So I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just taking lighter threads off the lighter branches and I'm matching those up. So if I bring it up close, you can see I've put in all those little branches now and filled out the shape of the tree. A lot of these will show because we're not going to put many leaves on and none of my branches have gone beyond the boundaries of that outer circle. So the, the circular shape of the tree is kind of formed. Now I'm going to put in some leaves and I've got a gold coloured thread here. I've got two strands threaded into my needle. I'm going to do this in the same way that I did the leaves in the summer tree. So I'm going to do a detached chain stitch with a longish stalk on it. So to do a chain stitch, I'm going to bring my thread up through from the back of the felt. So I'm going to loop it around and take my needle back down in the same place that the thread came up. Then I'm going to bring my needle back up inside that loop a little bit further away and then add on a stalk to anchor that loop in place. I'm just going to extend that out a little bit beyond the length of the loop and then I'm just going to add in a straight stitch down the middle of that chain stitch just to fill in the gap. If you're not sure about this I do explain it in much more detail in the summer tree video and I'll link that in a card at the top of the screen. So I just want a scattering of these leaves across the tree. I don't want it too dense because I want them it to look like many of the leaves have fallen. And it's just a matter of balancing them out across the tree. So I've just got one single length of thread here. It's about 35 centimetres long and I'm just using just that. And it, I'm trying to gauge where to place them on the tree so that that colour is scattered around and fairly evenly spaced. And I'm also making sure that my leaves aren't all going in the same direction because I want this to look pretty organic and natural. So I've turned my work as I've gone to make sure that the leaves are poking in different directions. I've got a darker shade of gold here and I'm just adding in some more leaves. And then I've 
added in a more muted shade so the the two colors that i've used so far are quite bright they're they're earthy but quite strong colors this is a much more muted tone and then finally i've got a, a paler gold to add some highlight to those leaves so that's all the leaves on the tree and now i'm going to add some at the bottom so i'm just using bits of thread that are left over and i just want a few leaves in each color along the bottom of the tree there so i'm starting with that lightest color that i finish off with and i think i only put about six leaves at the bottom here in this color again just making that chain stitch with the the extended anchor stitch that makes it look slightly pointed and making sure that the leaves are all going in slightly different directions. So they're quite nicely spaced out. You can see that I'm turning the panel there just to make sure that I'm putting leaves at lots of different angles. So I'm just coming back in now with all the other colours that I've used in the tree to create a sort of bed of leaves at the bottom of the panel. The last thing I want to do is add a little bit of sparkle. So I've got my gold beads here. I want to add some beads because all of the other trees have beads on them and it just adds a little bit of something else to add a bit of interest to the shape of the tree so again i'm just bringing my needle up from the back i've got a single strand here on a beading needle pick up a bead on my needle and take my thread back through to the back of the felt and i'm just putting a scattering of these on it's not going to be very many and again just like with the leaves i just want to make sure that the the colour of the bead is evenly spaced around the shape of the tree. So I want I want it to look fairly random, but I also don't want them all grouped together. I want them sort of scattered across the shape. So I, think, I think I only put about 10 of these beads on just across the canopy of the tree. And then I secured my thread on the back. So that's the gold beads on. I'm going to put some at the bottom now. Just a few again, maybe five or six across the bottom. And I did think it looked a little bit brassy, that, that bright gold. So I've got my antique gold beads in. And I'm just going to repeat that process with the antique gold beads. So putting them a few along the bottom. And then I'm going to go in and add some to the canopy of the tree. This is a really simple one this week and a fairly quick one. There's our finished panel. That's our autumn tree. If I bring it up close, you can see those branches showing through with the scattering of leaves. I'm really liking that this one has got leaves on the floor. None of the other the other ones have got that. And I love the, the little beads in there that just add a little bit of something else to look at. So that's our piece. I hope you've enjoyed that. I think this is my favourite out of all of the trees that we've done. I just love these earthy colours and I wasn't sure about the brown for the background but I'm really glad I went with it because it just brings out those gold leaves really nicely. Can't wait to see your versions. Do share what you create at hashtag FSH winging it. And so that we can see all of these together, you can also add hashtag FSH winging it 47. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give us a like. It really helps us out and it helps other people to find our channel as well. If you want to make another one of the trees, I will link a video down here and I'll link a video up here that is best for you. If you'd like to subscribe, click on our logo down at the bottom here and that makes it really easy for you. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.
Bye.